Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Friday, December 27, 2013. I'm Leanne McAdoo, and here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, a new gun law coming in 2014 has gun owners stocking up on rifles and shotguns before the new registry begins. Then, YouTube continues to remove our review of It's a Wonderful Life because big banks don't want you to realize that the classic movie exposes the real modern day banking cartel. Plus, Alex Jones says 2014 is key for the liberty movement. That's coming up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, tonight's theme, 2014 is going to be a key year. Now, we saw in 2013 the elite really ramping up their efforts for total domination, but they've had to admit that they're about a decade behind in their plans for implementing this new world order. And that is, of course, thanks to a very small group of liberty-minded people that continue to expose them. But they continue to push, and in turn, that means people are waking up even faster. You would think that they would learn this whole cause and effect situation that we have, but instead... They continue to push for total submission. We've got the NSA just reinterpreting the boundaries of the Constitution. We have a growing police state in this country. And of course, the one thing that we have that keeps the government in check, the Second Amendment, is being jeopardized every single day. Take this new law that's going to be passing in California January 1st. This one's going to require that long gun owners register their weapons, much like handgun owners who are already required to do so in the state. But with this new push, sales for long guns in the state are up 30 to 50 percent in just the last week of 2013 alone. Now, the new law is going to track the make, model, and serial number of the gun, as well as the person who owns it. Now, previously, dealers would just destroy this personal information on long gun owners after a background check was complete, but now they'll register those purchases with the state. Supporters of the law say that it will improve safety, of course, by making sure that guns get into the hands of the right people. Because as we've highlighted here on this show so many times before, criminals always go through the proper channels to obtain a firearm. And another way, of course, that the government is pushing this gun control is through ammo. And then we'll take the green ammo mandate. This is a expanded regulations that are issued by the Environmental Protection Agency. They have forced the closing of the country's last bullet-producing lead smelter in a push for green, lead-free ammunition. Of course, this means that ammo prices are going to skyrocket. They'll force the use of more expensive and eco-friendly substitutes. Now, I'm a hippie at heart. I am all for saving the environment. I'm all for it. But these guys do not care about saving the environment. They care about stripping you of your right to keep and bear arms. It's all about the ability of the government to force total submission. I don't understand why the gun grabbers don't get it. It's, it's not really about the guns. The Second Amendment is not there to ensure that we can go hunting and shoot squirrels or even protect ourselves from rapers and robbers. Obviously, that is a great benefit of being able to have a gun in your home. But the Second Amendment was designed to ensure that anyone could retain the right and the means to defend themselves against any threat, any harm, be that an individual gang or a gangster government who would want to violate their trust under the color of law. It, this plan is uh, to eviscerate individual sovereignty and replace it with total dependence upon and submission to the state. I don't understand why gun grabbers can't see the writing on the wall. It's happened so many times throughout history. And what's worse, the state can't even handle an entire country of people being dependent upon it. They've already had to forego the funding for millions of people who are on food stamps. So what are they going to do when the entire country is dependent upon them to, to eat? That's going to be a scary notion. And of course, it's this spiraling national debt that has now caused a top financial advisor to recommend that all Americans get firearms and ammunition as a key essential in their bug out pack. David John Murata says that while he doesn't agree with the end of the world scenario, he says, I, along with many other economists, agree with many of the concerns expressed in these dire warnings. 
and he said that Americans should purchase firearms and ammo to help them stay alive for the first 72 hours of a crisis. And in Murata's case, he doesn't think it's going to be some devastating hurricane. He says it's probably a looming financial crisis when you consider the growing debt and deficit spending, the devaluation of the U.S. dollar, it's risking its status as the reserve currency of the world. Obamacare was the worst legislation in the past 75 years. Socialism's on the rise. And then, of course, the NSA continues to violate portions of the Constitution. Now, in addition to the firearms and ammunition that Murata recommends is an essential part of your bug out pack, you can also find a lot of the other things you're going to need for your pack for your survival bug out pack at the InfoWars store. We only sell the highest quality items for the lowest possible price. You can find storable food, filters, and portable generators. But while the government continues to spend all of your taxpayer dollars and rack up trillions of dollars of debt that they never intend to repay, local courts are now jailing people who aren't able to pay their fines that are associated with their court costs. Now, even though reforms have outlawed this practice of debtors' prisons, it's being reborn in local courts. Now, aside from the legal questions surrounding the practice, jailing poor people who are struggling to pay debts doesn't even make sense. How are they supposed to work to pay off those fines while they're in jail? And not to mention the fact that it costs taxpayers a lot of money to keep people imprisoned. Not to mention the fact that it costs taxpayers a lot of money to keep people imprisoned. Where are the savings? But before you think that, oh, that can't happen to me, that's just going to happen to poor people, understand that there are a bunch of government-imposed fees that are headed in your way in 2014, and they're just going to eat away at you like tiny little carnivorous fish. Rana attacked 70 people in Argentina on Wednesday, even biting off one girl's fingers. Small freshwater fish with big teeth that feed into popular nightmares. There's something in the water! <laughs> Fodder for Hollywood flicks like Piranha 3D. And piranha attacks are happening all over America, depending on how you define piranha attacks. You know, a bite here and there. For example, if you want to eat fish, the price has doubled since 1990. Wheat prices just jumped by 4.9%. Chocolate was up 28% for the first 10 months of 2013 and climbing. And it's not just food. That other staple, energy cost, is also skyrocketing. People are paying just for the privilege of getting connected to the surveillance grid with smart meters. For example, in Chicago, the average household electric bill will increase by $5.5 per month just to pay for new smart grid infrastructure. But because of Obama's war on coal, by summer, energy rates are expected to soar by 23%, and not just in Chicago. Remember when Obama said companies could build new coal-powered plants, but it would bankrupt them? Well, he's shutting down coal-powered plants, and it's bankrupting you. But hey, prices are going down because of natural gas, right? Nope. Expect a 36% increase there. And then there's the cost of Obamacare. If the other surcharges are coming at you like a school of piranha, taking hundreds of bites out of you, Obamacare is coming at you like a great white shark. 2% on your insurance policy, 3.5% on the insurer, 2.3% on medical devices. Altogether, $479 billion in new taxes. And besides the new taxes on insurance policies, insurers, and medical devices, there's new taxes on investment income, Medicare, biofuels, drugs, retirement benefits, tanning salons, hospitals, even capping deductions on special needs kids. That's right, a tax on special needs kids. Now, if $479 billion doesn't really register with you, because we talk about billions and trillions all the time, let's put that into perspective. Out of all 187 nations worldwide, 162 nations don't even have a gross national product as high as the Obamacare tax increases. Countries like Denmark, Austria, Finland, Greece, Ireland, Israel, Taiwan, don't even have a GMP of $479 billion, the amount of money that Obama is going to steal from Americans for his affordable health care. Which brings us back to Argentina, the country where 70 people were just attacked by piranha. They only have a gross national product of $474 billion, less than the increase in taxes for Obamacare. The government does take a bite, doesn't it?
Our government is just like a school of hungry piranha, and we just keep feeding them. Now stick around, because after the break, Alex Jones is going to have a very special message about 2014 and how it is the key year for waking people up to this tyrannical government. It's time. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formulation fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. We're on the march, the Empire's on the run, and the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution, InfoWarsStore.com. Well, Alex Jones was waxing philosophical over the holiday, and it prompted him to record this very special message. Here is an excerpt. Alex Jones predicts that 2014 is going to be a key year for humanity. This is such a critical time for not just this nation or the world, but everyone individually. So many different political, socioeconomic, scientific, cultural developments are coming to a head, and futurists and historians, commentators around the world are recognizing that there is tremendous change taking place at every single level of civilization. And the technocrats, those that crave control, are working overtime right now to try to form and control the future battle space. So I want to talk a little bit about what we expect to see in, in unfolding this next year and why it's so important that we get the word out like ever before, because it is sunshine that is the best disinfectant. Now, first off, worldwide, the private banking cartels, represented by the Federal Reserve, IMF, World Bank, and others, are openly trying to depress real economies, engage in deindustrialization selectively against their competition and individuals as a tool to impoverish so they can consolidate control, collectivize the system, exempt themselves from their own bureaucratic red tape. This is economic siege, a takeover. And part of that is also flooding Europe, England, Australia, New Zealand, the United States with unskilled labor to drive down wages, but also create domestic voting blocks that are allied with the establishment and the government to then be used as political leverage to vote and also hit the streets in government sanctioned and supported demonstrations kind of an artificial astroturf 
uh, to overwhelm the grassroots. You're also seeing, uh, again, the acceleration of the shutting down of the coal power plants worldwide, except for globalist owned ones. Uh, you're going to see a huge push towards disarming the public under the UN treaties. This is all happening right now. You're seeing the full out unveiling of the agenda of forced drugging of the general population, uh, the dumbing down of children through the public schools, the announcements that the state is now the main uh, parental control that's being announced worldwide right now. Homeschooling's being outlawed across the planet. The full rush is now being brought in because Zbigniew Brzezinski, David Rockefeller, and others are on record admitting the New World Order is at least a decade behind their planetary corporate fascist government using socialism as the flypaper to domesticate the population. And 2014 in Europe and in the United States and in Africa and in Asia, Latin America, everywhere, the stars are aligning right now for a huge global awakening against tyranny or against a total globalist takeover because they've implemented and they have created the political atmosphere economically through their central banks for implosion and revolution. And then they in intend to use the controlled media, the establishment media, to steer the public concern and to steer the energy of the populations revolting, just like they did with the Arab Spring to put in Al-Qaeda and others all over the Middle East and North Africa. So we've got to get in there and reverse that. We've got to get in there and point out to people who is really behind this. That's the critical juncture that we're at right now. Now, if you're a Prison Planet subscriber, you can watch the rest of that report right after the show. But coming up next, we're gonna re-air a report that was just a little too powerful for YouTube. Symbols are powerful, and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of America. They've turned them into their own symbols. Well, we are restoring the idea of the true republic, not the counterfeit globalist empire, by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% Made in America line of incredible pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty. We are helping fellow Americans Americans rediscover what made this country great. We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny of freedom. Visit madein1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America high quality products and promote the ideals of liberty. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Well, we reviewed the classic Christmas tale, It's a Wonderful Life, and related it to the current state of the banking system. But it proved to be a little too powerful for YouTube. They continue to censor the video and take it down in an act of political suppression. Over the last 100 years, the Federal Reserve has created bubbles and burst them. 
enslaved us with debt, and destroyed our purchasing power through inflation. Yes, it's been a wonderful lie for the bankers. There are striking parallels in Frank Capra's It's a Wonderful Life to the lies and tricks that real bankers used to create the Federal Reserve. Human nature doesn't change, and the greedy elite of 1913 and 2013 look and act a lot like Potter, the banker in the movie. And many Americans are left like George Bailey, staring into the abyss as their dreams collapse and they face financial ruin. Do we live in a country that looks a lot more like Pottersville than Bedford Falls? What does Frank Capra's film show us about how we got here and how we can get out? When the Federal Reserve was created two days before Christmas 100 years ago, it was a culmination of six years of fraud, fear, and manipulation. I've never really seen one, but that's got all the earmarks of being a run. The Panic of 1907 was used to shape public support for the Fed. The panic was triggered by rumors that two major banks were about to become insolvent, just as we see in the movie. George, there is a rumor around town that you've closed your doors. Is that true? I am going all out to help in this crisis. I have just guaranteed the bank sufficient funds to meet their needs. They will close up for a week and then reopen. Just took over the bank. I may lose a fortune, but I am willing to guarantee your people too. Just tell them to bring their shares over here and I will pay 50 cents on the dollar. Oh, you never miss a trick, do you, Potter? Unfortunately, J.P. Morgan got away with the deception and was able to shut down competitors and snapped up assets at fire sale prices. Uh, take during the Depression, for instance. You and I were the only ones that kept our heads. You saved the building and loan. I saved all the rest. Yes, well, most people say you stole all the rest. The envious ones say that, George. The suckers. Charles Lindbergh Sr. warned people at the time of the creation of the Federal Reserve that it would not stop boom and bust cycles, but would actually create them in order to benefit its private owners. Here's what he said. To cause high prices, all the Federal Reserve Board will do will be to lower the rediscount rate, producing an expansion of credit and a rising stock market. Then, when businessmen are adjusted to these conditions, it can check prosperity in mid-career by arbitrarily raising the rate of interest. It can cause a pendulum of a rising and falling market to swing gently back and forth, or cause violent fluctuations by greater rate variation. And in either case, it will possess inside information as to the financial conditions and advanced knowledge of the coming change, either up or down. This is the strangest, most dangerous advantage ever placed in the hands of a special privileged class by any government that ever existed. The system is private, conducted for the sole purpose of obtaining the greatest possible profits from the use of other people's money. They know in advance when to create panics to their advantage and they know when to stop panic. Inflation and deflation work equally well for them when they control the finance. As we see in the movie, not all lending institutions have the same motivations. Now you take this loan here, the Ernie Bishop. You know, that fellow that sits around all day on his brains in his taxi, you know. I happen to know the bank turned down this loan, but he comes here and we're building him a house worth $5,000. Why? Well, I handled that, Mr. Potter. You have all the papers there, his salary, insurance. I can personally vouch for his character. Friend of yours? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. You see, if you shoot pool with some employee here, you can come and borrow money. <laughs> what does that get us? A discontented, lazy rabble instead of a thrifty working class. As a former FDIC chair said, all too often the large banks use their models and their algorithms, and if you don't fit in their boxes, you don't get the loan. And Dodd-Frank legislation is tying the hands of small lenders, shutting out buyers and shutting down lenders. Today there are fewer lenders than at any time the government has kept records. 10,000 banks disappeared between 1984 and 2011. This town needs this measly one-horse institution, if only to have some place where people can come without crawling to Potter. Come on. In the movie, George gets to see what happens to the small town if Potter didn't have competition from credit unions and smaller lenders. If it hadn't been for you... Yeah, if it hadn't been for me, everybody would be a lot better off. My wife and my kids and my friends. And my... Look, little fellow, why you go off and haunt somebody else? Yeah, so you still think killing yourself would make everyone feel happier, right? Oh, I don't know. I guess you're right. I suppose it had been better if I'd never been born at all. Pottersville, the only businesses thriving are vice. People are angry. 
The town is filled with signs like, keep moving, keep off the grass. Bert the cop actually shoots at George when he's running away and is no threat to anyone. Stand back! Everyone is a renter, no one has a stake. Now you're Ernie Bishop and you live in Bailey Park with your wife and kid. Look, bud, what's the idea? I live in a shack in Potter's Field. My wife ran away three years ago and took the kid and I ain't never seen you before in my life, see? Private property and everyone having a stake is the antidote to Pottersville. Here, you're all businessmen here. Don't it make them better citizens? Doesn't it make them better customers? But whether it's the Trans-Pacific Partnership or a global carbon tax, the global elite don't see you as a stakeholder. They want to turn us all into serfs and treat us like cattle. Just remember this, Mr. Potter, that this rabble you're talking about, they do most of the working and paying and living and dying in this community. Well, is it too much to have them work and pay and live and die in a couple of decent rooms and a bath? Anyway, my father didn't think so. People were human beings to him, but to you, a warped, frustrated old man, they're cattle. Well, in my book, he died a much richer man than you'll ever be. I'm not interested in your book. I'm talking about the building and loan. I know very well what you're talking about. You're talking about something you can't get your fingers on. Speaking of riches, do you find the salary amounts amusing when Potter tries to buy George off? Let's look at your side. <laughs> Young man, 27, 28, married, making, say, 40 a week. 45. 45. 45. George, I'll start you out at $20,000 a year. $20,000? $20, a year? You wouldn't mind living in the nicest house in town, buying your wife a lot of fine clothes, a couple of business trips to New York a year, maybe once in a while Europe. You wouldn't mind that, would you, George? Would I? Even if George had saved a lot of his $20,000 salary, would it have bought much a couple of decades later? By even the government's very conservative estimate of inflation, the dollar has lost 90% of its value since 1947 when the movie was made. The Fed's deliberate inflation is devastating to anyone trying to accumulate wealth through hard work and saving. So what is the answer to all the George Baileys out there a hundred years after the government gave control of our money supply to private bankers like Potter? Well, Potter had more money than he could spend, but would any of you want to be Potter? You sit around here and you spin your little webs and you think the whole world revolves around you and your money. Well, it doesn't, Mr. Potter. In the, in the whole vast configuration of things, I'd say you were nothing but a scurvy little spider. George Bailey finally sees how rich his own life is as he sees the fruits of relationship, honesty, and compassion. In jail. Go on home. They're waiting for you. <laughs> and if the public can awaken to the lies of the Federal Reserve, if it could even be audited. Well, hello, Mr. Bank Examiner. How are... It would be a huge step to breaking the chains that enslave all of us. But ultimately, it is God that changes minds and changes hearts. God hates oppression, and we can and should confidently pray that he will stop it. I owe everything to George Bailey. Help him, dear father. Joseph, Jesus, and Mary, help my friend, Mr. Bailey. Help my son, George, tonight. He never thinks about himself, God. That's why he's in trouble. George is a good guy. Give him a break, God. I love him, dear Lord. Watch over him tonight. Please, God, something's the matter with Daddy. Please bring Daddy back. <laughs> I'm not a praying man, but if you're up there and you can hear me, show me the way. For the InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Knight. That's right. The banksters have been enjoying their wonderful lie for far too long. The Federal Reserve's been in place 100 years now. So put this video out to all your friends. It's incredibly powerful and effective. Let's get this thing viral and put the truth out there. And of course, another way that you can put the truth out there and spread this message is by becoming a member of Prison Planet TV. We're still running that New Year's special, which means that you can get 
five months free when you sign up for an annual subscription. And of course, you can share your username and password with up to 10 other people. So that is 11 of you that can be enjoying this at the same exact time. So go ahead, become a Prison Planet TV subscriber, support this transmission. It's time for 1776 worldwide, folks. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to the InfoWars Nightly News tonight. We'll be back here Monday at 7 p.m. Central. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at InfoWars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com slash show. Christmas 2013 came and went, and now we stare into the critical year of 2014, like the barrel of a shotgun. This is such a critical time for not just this nation or the world, but everyone individually. So many different political, socioeconomic, scientific, cultural developments are coming to a head and futurists and historians, commentators around the world are recognizing that there is tremendous change taking place at every single level of civilization. And the technocrats, those that crave control, are working overtime right now to try to form and control the future battle space. So I want to talk a little bit about what we expect to see in, in unfolding this next year and why it's so important that we get the word out like ever before, because it is sunshine that is the best disinfectant. Now, first off, worldwide, the private banking cartels represented by the Federal Reserve, IMF, World Bank, and others are openly trying to depress real economies, engage in deindustrialization selectively against their competition and individuals as a tool to impoverish so they can consolidate control, collectivize the system, exempt themselves from their own bureaucratic red tape. This is economic siege, a takeover. And part of that is also flooding Europe, England, Australia, New Zealand, the United States with unskilled labor to drive down wages, but also create domestic voting blocks that are allied with the establishment and the government to then be used as political leverage to vote and also hit the streets in government sanctioned and supported demonstrations as kind of a artificial astroturf uh, to overwhelm the grassroots. You're also seeing, uh, again, the acceleration of the shutting down of the coal power plants worldwide except for globalist-owned ones. Uh, you're going to see a huge push towards disarming the public under the UN treaties. This is all happening right now. You're seeing the full-out unveiling of the agenda of forced drugging of the general population, uh, the dumbing down of children through the public schools, the announcements that the state is now the main uh, parental control that's being announced worldwide. Right now, homeschooling is being outlawed across the planet. The full rush is now being brought in because the Zbigniew Brzezinski, David Rockefeller, and others are on record admitting the New World Order is at least a decade behind their planetary corporate fascist government using socialism as the flypaper to domesticate the population. And 2014 in Europe and in the United States and in Africa and in Asia. Latin America, everywhere. The stars are aligning right now for a huge global awakening against tyranny or against a total globalist takeover because they've implemented and they have created the political atmosphere economically through the central banks for implosion and revolution. And then they intend to use the controlled media, the establishment media, to steer 
the public concern and to steer the energy of the populations revolting, just like they did with the Arab Spring to put in Al-Qaeda and others all over the Middle East and North Africa. So we've got to get in there and reverse that. We've got to get in there and point out to people who is really behind this. That's the critical juncture that we're at right now. And believe me, folks, you've got power. You've got major, major power. Here's just a small example of this today. Uh, we produced a analysis of It's a Wonderful Life about banking cartels trying to bankrupt society to control it. And it was so effective, uh, David Knight's uh, review for InfoWars Nightly News, that they removed it off of our channel claiming copyright when it was clearly fair use, the highest standard of fair use. An old film that's political, has been in the public domain, returned back into copyright, famous case, but regardless, it's fair use for analyzing the film to compare it to contemporary developments. It's an advertisement for it. It's the opposite of violating their copyright. That's taught 101 in RTF. It's an ad, a trailer, uh, if you're analyzing a film, you're absolutely authorized to do that. And so the movie company that made the claim, they didn't sue us, or they didn't send a cease and desist. They just claimed we were in violation of their copyright. And they didn't do it with a bot. That's important. The video's been uploaded dozens of times, our report, and mirrored on other sites. They specifically went in with a claim on our channel. And then when we posted mirrors of the video of the report, they went in and selectively took those down, not the ones that we didn't link to. So they're watching Infowars.com, and they're upset about that report because it was so effective what David Knight said. Now, we're not going to take this censorship and just lie down to it. We're going to take their censorship, and I've been through this before, and have it boomerang around to point out that SOPA and CISPA would actually codify into law that they could just make the claim and take it down under law and then ban you from the Internet under Internet ID rules, just like China does, after three violations. No judge, no jury, they just say you're gone. So instead of this being a defeat against us, I'm going to be back live on the radio with David Knight tomorrow. I'm going to re-air it on my own show, and I'm going to challenge the movie company that we're writing an article about right now uh, that made this false claim to come after me personally. And I'm going to continue to air it on the nightly news, and I'm going to continue to put it out on my own platforms that they don't control. And so that's an example of this. It's like when I showed the collateral murder video that every other news agency in the world was showing of the helicopter shooting up the Reuters minivan. They only took down our version of it because of what we had to say about it. We didn't attack the military killing the children. We poignantly pointed out that the helicopter pilots disconnected, like in Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse Five, from the killing were making jokes about it but the special forces that came to save the children, the American troops, were crying to see the small children shot up. We were showing the humanity of having to be on the ground seeing it happen versus a drone or a helicopter. Something pointed out by many historians, and it was because it was touching, it was poignant. When I saw this report David Knight had put together, I said, they're going to take that down. It's too powerful. Every time we put out humor that's powerful or something poignant that's powerful, you always know what they're going to take down because, folks, if we were able to make people rediscover It's a Wonderful Life and connect it to the Federal Reserve, which the film's really about, and the, and the engineered Great Depression, it is game over for these people. And they're smart. The people that serve the dark side know when they see something that really can bring people together instead of dividing us, bring us together for liberty against the globalists, they take it down. And they wouldn't be taking it down if we didn't have power and if we couldn't change the course of history. And that's the issue. They know it's always a small, motivated group that's able to make history. They're a small, motivated, evil group. We are a small, motivated, good group who way outnumber them. I mean, liberty is popular, folks. And getting more popular by the minute. <laughs> People see the fruits of tyranny. It's horrible. So that's my basic breakdown. I hope you had a great Christmas. 2014 is just so essential. Uh, the video, if you want to try to find it, uh, was titled... 
it's a wonderful lie, 100 years of the Federal Reserve. And they are not ha happy about it, so mirror it on other sites that don't, uh, don't take videos down with false claims. We're going to make an issue out of it and uh, probably uh, challenge it. I've, I've done that many, many other times. Uh, this is just outrageous what's happened. Uh, this, this is part of the game. And, and if they can get us just to complain and say, oh, copyright law is wrong and just go away, they win. This isn't copyright law that did this. They're trying to change copyright law to do this. They did this through a fraudulent claim. And so, again, the video is reposted for now up on Infowars.com. I don't know how long. Uh, they've even tried to ban 150, 160-year-old uh, Christmas songs now. They're claiming copyright on those. We have articles on Infowars. This is real tyranny, folks. This is copyright being absolutely, absolutely abused. Uh, copyright violation would be if a new book came out and was published, and then you just went and grabbed it and printed it yourself. That'd be 100% copyright violation, and I believe that's theft. But if a book is 200 years old and didn't have a copyright, and you reprint it, and some big company claims they own it now because they put a version out, it's a fraud if your version's different. Or if you do a magazine article and say print, you know, up two pages of a book in there, and you're reviewing it, and, and you're being critical of it, or you're being supportive of it, that's your free speech. So that's what's happening here. It'd be like, let's say it's, it's a Wonderful Life, it's 200 pages long, and we published on YouTube five pages of it to analyze the five pages line by line. Totally protected, and they say it's not. And I'm not even blaming YouTube here, okay? I want to be clear. It's a public commons. You have to follow the rules. They can't do anything when a false claim is made. They've got to let you challenge it. The problem is they just believe big companies like Paramount, and it's really even hard to challenge it when they do it. So I have to challenge Paramount themselves. This is about controlling reality. This is about dominating society and civilization. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed this beautiful scenery, and I'll be back on the radio tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central, Infowars.com. If you get excited out there and go get that video and get it out to everyone, it will have a really big effect. And their attempted censorship of It's a Wonderful Lie, our review of It's a Wonderful Life exposing the Federal Reserve, then it'll backfire on them. But that's up to you. All right, folks, Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com. Follow me on Twitter at Real Alex Jones. Stand for the First Amendment, stand for free expression, or be slaves. Free speech is even more important than the Second Amendment. That's why it's the First Amendment. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show.